So the carp were first found in um, late January in 1995. Uh, an angler was fishing on the, on the bank in, in Lake Crescent. He saw a seagull feeding on what he thought was a fish. Uh, he picked up the remains of this fish, so he brought it to fisheries officers and we could see that it was a European carp. We did surveys and found carp very quickly. Uh, within a matter of a couple of weeks, the lakes were closed to the public. Carp are known to be the rabbit of the waterways. They um, are invasive, they breed in big numbers. A three kilo female carp is known to have about a million eggs. So you can see that they very quickly can breed to a level where they're out competing the other species in the lake. Uh, they then start becoming very destructive by pulling up the aquatic plants and dirtying the waterways, which then also impacts on the environmental system. Lakes Crescent and Lake Sorrell are part of the larger Derwent catchment. So if carp escaped out of Lake Crescent Sorrell, ultimately they can come all the way down to Bridgewater. So we could have carp spread very quickly. Our surveys indicated that the carp hadn't escaped into the Clyde River. So the outflow at Lake Crescent was screened to prevent carp eggs and juvenile carp from escaping during the key periods during uh, spring and summer. One of the cornerstone parts of the program was in 1997 we started to work with radio transmitters and we quickly worked out by implanting the larger male carp that we could follow them around the lake and work out where they were moving at different times of the year, where they were moving into shallow water or deep water at certain times and we would target them with our fishing gear. So it's now 25 years. Lake Crescent was declared carp free in 2009, but rising water levels provided ideal spawning conditions. In Lake Sorrell, we were down to a very low number. Unfortunately, the carp did spawn and we ended up with over 40,000 carp in the lake. So from the Lake Crescent experience, we were able to use a lot of our skills and knowledge. We know that the radio tracking was very effective in targeting aggregations and following the movements around the lake. But importantly, we needed to be able to stop spawning and the introduction of barrier nets around key wetlands in the lake has been vital to uh, blocking spawning while we're fishing down the remaining carp in the lake. So we have over 14 kilometres of barrier net out in Lake Sorrell blocking off all the major wetlands. These also have traps at the entrance points where the carp want to push into the marshes and wetlands to spawn. So in springtime the barriers and the traps become very very important. They target the adult carp as they come into spawn, catch them so we can remove them before they are able to spawn and recruit into the lake. And that's been a really important part of the program. Daily there is a, a team of two that goes out in the lake and during the peak periods we put two boats, which is a team of four on the water to target um, you know, potential spawning aggregations. The really important thing that we have is from the knowledge we had from the radio transmitter carp, we can follow weather events and predict carp movement now, so we know when to focus our effort and target that around the movement of carp. That becomes really important when you're trying to use your resources wisely. We've caught over 41,000 carp from Lake Sorrell. The program's now in a phase where a lot of effort's being put in for little return. The guys go out in the lake daily, the gear is in the prime locations to target the carp where we know they are at that time of year. We've fished for the last nine months and caught 39 carp. You start trying to add the numbers up and it's a lot of days in there where carp aren't caught. So it is relentless, but everyone knows how important it is to catch every single one of the carp from the lake. And we now believe there are very, very few left. Our estimates say less than 20. Um, we're also lucky that we've had our staff that have been able to follow the project all the way through. So the knowledge has been retained within the organisation. You know, the director, John Diggle, was a technical officer on the CARP program back in 1995. And I started as the compliance officer in 1995. So we have this long-term knowledge that we've gained uh, right through the project and been able to retain. There is nowhere else in the world that we know of that's been able to eradicate carp from a lake the size of Lake Crescent, which is over 23 square kilometres. If we could pull off Lake Sorrell, you know, 53 square kilometre lake, a natural lake where you can't control the water levels, removing carp without having any large environmental impacts on the lake is, is unheard of. So Lake Sorrell is positioned about an hour and a half from Hobart, an hour and a half from Launceston. These lakes were very, very important trout fisheries with over a third of the licensed anglers fishing in Lake Sorrell and Lake Crescent prior to carp being found. 
They're also important for other recreational pursuits like uh, duck hunting, kayaking, boating on the lakes. So it's really, really important to catch the last few carp out of the lake, but we're getting to the point now where we're focusing on how we reopen the lake to the public. The removal of the barrier nets around the lake and allowing the, the trout to get into the wetlands where there are large food resource in the spring and early summer will be an important phase as well. And once we're certain there aren't any carp left, being able to remove all this gear will uh, ensure that the trout fishery bounces back very quickly. The trout that we're finding in the lake are in very, very good condition and really it's going to be a great fishing opportunity for anglers in the near future.